I hope everyone is doing well out there. Back here for another NBA offseason guide. And it feels like forever ago that the last time we saw a good team in Orlando. But if you think about it, it was just a couple of seasons ago that we saw them make the playoffs. Now, something that a lot of NBA fans have quite honestly forgot about. But they made the playoffs between 2018 and 2020. But this year, they took a step in the right direction toward being a powerhouse in the East once again. We saw Paolo Boncaro, Wagner, and Carter Jr., all play decently well. Those three guys led this team pretty much on their own. And that is quite honestly something that you love to see in Orlando is the big men lead the way. But not only that, but they got some good guard play this year. And both Bancaro and Wagner are still in their rookie contracts. With Wagner being in year three, or heading into year three, and Bancaro being in year two. Now, if you take a look at how the offseason is starting to look for the Orlando Magic... They are stacked heading into the offseason. Not only do they have Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony. They've also got Mo... No, Mo Bamba was traded. They've still got Bull Bull and Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris. Which, we'll touch on Gary Harris after a little bit. You also still have Moritz Wagner, who is 25, the older brother of Franz. So it's really interesting the way that this roster has been constructed. But it's been done in a very well-mannered way. And it's allowed the Orlando Magic to have some cap flexibility. Heading into this offseason. Now. They have the opportunity. Of a lifetime here. With the NBA draft coming up. They have not one but two. Lottery picks as well as an early second. So they could potentially add a. couple of good players to it, a strong young core, and make it even stronger. Now, they could also trade away those picks and go out and get a star player. But is now the right time to do that? Not necessarily. You're on the right track to becoming that team that you want to see success from in Orlando. There's no point in going out and trading two lottery picks for a big name guy right now and risking ruining that success that you're seeing right now. And as I mentioned, you've got some cap flexibility and I mentioned talking about Gary Harris Well. Here's the scenario with Gary Harris. You could create some cap space by moving on from him, but he fits a role with his 40% three-point shooting. He's probably not going to be a long-term option, so you could use that as some sort of an upgrade. Maybe go out and get a guy like Scoot Henderson, 
you know, trade those two lottery picks up for a top five, top four, top three pick, whatever you have to do. But Scoot Henderson would be a decent guy to get alongside Markel Fultz or Cole Anthony. Still waiting on Jalen Suggs to potentially jump into that mix. Um, haven't seen the best from him. Only 9.9 .9 points last season. Two, almost three assists. And, but he only shot 327 from the field. Or from three. Uh, 41, 42 from the field. Not great from a guy that you thought was going to be your starting shooting guard. But outside of Gary Harris, nobody else really shot above 36% that saw valuable minutes last season. So that's definitely a need of concern for the Orlando Magic heading into this offseason is upgrading that three-point shooting and getting somebody that you can move forward with as your shooting guard in the long-term picture. 